Hey, so I'm going to show you how to do um, the energy diagrams for a hydrogen atom. So after you've done the previous lesson, lesson five on energy levels, I'm just going to show you how to do this because we would usually do this at the whiteboard anyway, so I think it's going to be better to do it together. So we have a picture here of a hydrogen atom with one proton, and then we have these different orbitals. So we have N1, N2, N3, and N4. And then if you go to your reference table, and I believe this is page two of the reference table, there are two diagrams. There's one for hydrogen and there's one for mercury, but I'm not including that one here. We're just going to look at hydrogen because we're only looking at hydrogen right now. So it says, number one, assuming the diagram above represents a hydrogen ion, label each energy level N1 through N4 with its value in EV based on the energy diagram in your reference table. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at N1, N2, N3, and N4. So N1 is negative 13.6 EV, N2 is negative 3.40 EV, N3 is going to be negative 1.51 EV, and 4 is going to be negative 0 0.85 EV. So that is the different pathway, or that's the different energy level for that electron to jump, leave that orbital, basically. So if we wanted for, if we had an electron in this orbital and we wanted it to jump out of the atom, we would need negative 13.6 EV of energy to go in to make that electron jump out of the atom. Um, and negative, we should talk about the negative. So negative, uh, it's, we don't have, negative energy doesn't exist, right? Energy is not a vector quantity. It doesn't depend on direction. But the negative in this case is just simply meaning that's how much energy would need to be absorbed for it to jump. So that's kind of where it comes in. The negative means that it's being absorbed. So different pathways it could take. So it could jump from orbital 1 to orbital 2. That could be a possibility. So we would we would subtract these two numbers from each other, and that's how much energy that would have to be absorbed for it to jump. Or it could go from N1 to N3, and then again you would look at this and this, um, and you would take the difference between those to find out how much energy would be absorbed for it to be jump up. And then we could go from N1 to N1. Four, and of course that's going to even be you're going to be comparing this one and that one and that's how much energy would need to be absorbed to move up into that other orbital so when we talk about like an electron being excited where it jumps to a new orbital it's absorbing energy to allow it to jump to that next level then let's say you're at orbital four and the electrons kind of like all right um they're tired of hanging out at the party they want to like go back to previous orbitals so in that case, because they're in the excited state, they have to release some of that energy. So if it goes from uh, the fourth orbital, let's say, all the way back down to this one, energy is going to have to be given off. And so that energy is released in the form of light. So that it sends out a photon. So it starts out in the excited state, but it wants to go back to its ground state. So it releases light energy and jumps back down. So that's why we have different spectrums. Like if you look at hydrogen spectrum in the excited state, you'll see that there's different colors that show up. And that is the amount of energy the electron is releasing when it jumps back down to a lower state. So that's what we mean by that. So hopefully that's a, enough to kind of help you figure out the rest of the lesson. So the next part, it's going to ask you if an electron starts out at the ground state N1, circle all of the following photon energies that the electron could absorb. So what it's talking about there is like how much energy is it going to absorb to jump out of the atom? How much energy is it going to absorb if it goes from N1 to N2? How much is it going to absorb if it goes from you know, N1 to N3 and N1 to N4. So those are really the four things that you're going to be using. You'll need to probably use a calculation for some of these. And that, again, is going to be in the reference table and learned in the last lesson. Okay, that's it.